In this clip, we see the German city of Cologne in ruin. Cologne was Germany's fourth largest city and was attacked in 265 bombing raids during World War II. There were five bridges spanning the Rhine River in the vicinity of Cologne. On January 14, 1945, the Eighth Air Forces sent 70 B-17s to attack and destroy the Deutz River Bridge. Bombing accuracy was considered outstanding, with 98% of the bombs falling within 1,000 feet of the aim point. The intent of this video is to review the optimum bomb type, size, and fuse setting for the destruction of a through-type suspension bridge, and review the Cologne B-17 bridge attack mission. The USAAF evaluated bridge attacks and summarized their findings in this 1945 document titled The Relative Effectiveness of Various Types of Bombs and Fuses. Bridge bombing attacks needed to account for two issues. A bridge's foundation structural integrity is usually not affected by near misses, even if the bridge's foundation resides in the bomb crater. This image shows a bomb crater at the base of a bridge pillar support. Bomb casing fragmentation and blast damage is seen here. This strike did not inflict sufficient structural damage to compromise its structural integrity. The second issue is a bridge's vital load-bearing member area is small. Bombs need to detonate on or very near these vital locations. The bomb's fuse time delay setting needs to account for optimum penetration at detonation to maximize damage. The main feature of a through-type bridge is its structural members are above the road level. This is an example of a through-type bridge where the load-bearing members are above the road. Its overhead trusses or arches are made from steel or concrete. This image shows the two main bridges spanning the Rhine River at Cologne from a 1945 9th Air Force reconnaissance document. The Deutz Bridge is here. Hoenzelan Bridge is here. Cologne's Cathedral is here. The width of the river is around 1,300 feet. These are classified as through-type bridges as seen from their above-road cast superstructure shadows. A close-up view of the Deutz Bridge with its steel supports and cables. The Cathedral is in the background. To destroy the bridge's support members, the bomb must detonate at bridge contact. Image 10 shows the bomb's ideal detonation location to maximize damage of attacking a lattice truss type bridge. Image 11 shows the bomb's ideal detonation location to maximize damage of attacking a simple truss type bridge. These vital points are small. Bomb detonation needs to be at or near these locations. Photo 31 shows the effect of an instantaneously fused general purpose bomb detonation at the bridge's upper superstructure. The bridge's vital support members are severed. If a time delayed fused bomb strikes the floor of a bridge, it will pass through and detonate below the bridge. The bomb's blast and fragment effects will dissipate in the atmosphere, like seen in these detonation locations for a bomb fitted with a non delay and time delayed fuse. This is what occurred during two bridge attacks. The bomb's tail fuses were set to a 0.025 second time delay. The bombs detonated harmlessly in the river below. The bomb's fuses should be their instantaneous or non-delay type. Bomb size should be based on its damaging blast or fragmentation radius, sized from one half to full bridge width. A bomb that is too small will not effectively damage the bridge, and one that is too large is not economical. In this image, only one of the two parallel rail lines were destroyed by a 1,000-pound general-purpose delayed fuse bomb. A larger bomb should have been selected. This table recommends the general-purpose bomb size and fuse delay setting depending on type of bridge. For a single track through type steel truss bridge, the bomber should attack with 1,000 pound general purpose bombs fitted with either instantaneous or non time delayed fuses. The recommended bomb fuse combination based on altitude of release is listed on this table from a 1944 bomb and fuse selection document. In attacking suspension bridges 400 to 4,000 feet in length, a high altitude bomber should adopt a 1,000 pound general purpose bomb fitted with a non delay tail fuse. The bombardier should target the bridge's roadway since striking the vital towers and cables is not likely. Low altitude or dive attackers should pinpoint target the bridge's vulnerable towers and cable anchors. High altitude B 17 should aim mid span in the center of the bridge's width. Let's now walk through the Cologne attack. 
This map shows the state of Germany's borders and city locations prior to World War II. Cologne is located here. This table lists Germany's seventh largest cities by population and includes the weight of bombs dropped during World War II from a 1954 document discussing the bombing of Dresden. Cologne is Germany's fourth largest city and was struck by 45,000 tons of bombs, which is more bombs per capita than any of the other cities listed. Cologne was a major rail center as shown on this map showing Germany's major freight routes as of 1942 from a 1944 document on Germany's transportation system. This map shows the state of Reich occupied territories as of January 15, 1945, the day after the bridge attack. Cologne is here. The Allies targeted Cologne's bridges to stop the flow of troops and goods to the Western Front. This page from the Tactical Mission Report describes a target in the mission. The bombing target is the Deutsch Suspension Bridge in the city of Cologne. The bombers will sight the target by either Visual or GH. Cologne has 620 flat guns in the target area, 170 in range during the bomb run, and 120 after the bomb run. Two P-51s will scout ahead and relay weather and visibility conditions. Little to no enemy aircraft attacks are expected. The bombers will release chaff to confuse enemy radar. Chaff and radar countermeasure topics were covered in these channel's videos. The bombers will be escorted by six groups of Mustangs, three in close support, and three will fly ahead and clear the way. This page shows the bombers' routes and the timestamp checkpoints along the way. This map identifies the path of the bombers. The MPI is identified as the mid-span of the Deutz Bridge, shown as target aim point B. The 12 B-17s dropped 42 1,000-pound general-purpose bombs filled with TNT and 30 1,000-pound general-purpose bombs filled with RDX. All of the bombs were fitted with a non-delay tail fuse. Each of the B-17s carried six 1,000-pound general-purpose bombs. This page from a 1945 bomb and fuses document shows characteristics and a cutaway of the M65 1,000 pound general purpose bomb. The bomb is 67 inches in length, 19 inches in diameter, has a wall casing thickness of 0.5 inches, and its weight equates to 990 pounds when filled with 558 pounds of TNT. Some of the M65 bombs were filled with an RDX explosive, which is 1.5 times the explosive power as TNT by weight. The bomb's detonation train starts at bomb contact from the M102 non-delayed tail fuse here. An instantaneously nose-fused M65 can punch through 3.8 inches of armor, as defined on this table from a 1945 terminal ballistics document. This thickness should be increased by 20% if the detonation starts with a non-delayed tail fuse. This increase in punch-through power is from the detonation starting at the rear of the bomb, which pushes the blast downward. This page describes a bomb run. Visibility was obscured from attack debris and smoke from an earlier bomb run. The bombardier could pick up the target intermittently with the Norden bomb site's crosshairs. The bombs were salvo-released and struck around the aim point. The aim point was the center of the bridge. The bombs were released from an altitude of 25,200 feet at 1.38 in the afternoon. Bombing results were considered excellent. This image shows the axis of attack, MPI endpoint, and bomb strike pattern referenced to a 1,000 and 2,000 foot radius. 98% of the bombs fell within 1,000 feet of the endpoint, which are excellent results. Around 36% of 8th Air Force B-17 bombs were falling within 1,000 feet of the endpoint during the month of January 1945, based on this table from a 1947 USSBS bomb accuracy document. These images show the state of Cologne's bridges at war's end. If you've enjoyed this Cologne bridge-busting case study deep dive review and found it interesting and informative, please consider supporting the channel by commenting, liking, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.